Hi everyone. I never thought I'd be coming to you like this, but here I am. This has been a tough time for all of us and we're all uh, trying to do the best we can. And here we are in the White Sulphur Springs United Methodist Church and I want to thank Roger Linker for his uh, technical abilities and of course Bud who's always ready to be helpful to me. Before we begin worship, I just want to give you a few announcements. Uh, I regret to say that I've been informed by the bishop that we will definitely be closed for worship through Easter. And I know that that is a very disappointing thing to hear. But I'd also like to say, just think how wonderful it's going to be the day we can get back together and praise the Lord together. But during that time, there's a lot of things that you can do. We are in the season of Lent, which we usually are looking inside of ourselves for how we can grow spiritually. What can we do to strengthen our relationship with God? And during this tough time of social isolation and very careful behaviors, I ask that each time you put on a glove, you pray. I ask that each time you have to do something different, that you pray that we give thanksgiving to God for the opportunity to have more time. You know, I've been very busy the past few years and many of you have said that, you know, when are you taking a vacation? What's going on? And I have thought how wonderful it would be if I could have a staycation at home. Well, guess what? You gotta be careful what you pray for because I got it. But it's frustrating not to be with you not to share the love of the Lord with you. But it's also very gratifying to know that as we stay home and mindful of keeping each other healthy, we are praising God and serving each other. So let us come together in an attitude of worship. Let us hear God's word. Let us take it into our hearts and let us take it out into the world, to our families and wherever we are during this difficult time. We'll be turning to Psalm 46 in the Red Hymnal, and Bud and I will be reading it responsively to you. This is the Psalm of Strength, reminding us that God is ever-present, ever-knowing, and ever-caring. Bud, would you join me? Yes, I will. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city, which shall not be moved. God will help it at the dawn of the day. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. God's voice resounds, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come. Behold the works of the Lord, who has wrought desolations in the earth. Who makes wars cease to the end of the earth, breaks the bow, shatters the spear, and burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Our next hymn is number 117. O oh God, our help in ages past. And we will be singing four stanzas and have mercy on our singing. <laughs>
wilderness story, a reading from Matthew 4, verses 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him again, It is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him. Suddenly angels came and waited on him. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading and understanding of his word. Hi. Do you recognize me? This is what we all look like these days. Bud and I went to Walmart the other day and we were masked and gloved and disinfectant wipes in every pocket and my spray hand washer available. And as we walked through Walmart, I felt like we were in some kind of Twilight Zone TV movie or some new age science fiction show. We all had a lot to deal with. We've all had to make a lot of changes in a very brief period of time. We've all experienced life as we know it, abruptly changed like the rug pulled out from under us and frozen in what we can and cannot do. Now, I'm here to tell you that for somebody like me, that's really tough. And then some of you have small children or children that are not in school. And you're trying to work at home with children home and spouses are spending a lot of more time together. Pets are underfoot. And there's a lot of quality time that we're just not used to. I mentioned in the greeting that I've been looking for that downtime for a very long time. And part of me is kind of happy to have it, I'll be honest. But the other part of me is frustrated. I miss you. I miss this church. I like being in here today, even like this. I miss the freedom that we have in our lives to come and go and do. How we live, how we work, or don't work, how we shop, how we socialize, how we even worship has all changed seemingly overnight. And I can't tell you how strange it was for me the past two weeks to not be in worship on a Sunday. There's another side to this, the one I'm experiencing today, by the way. Some of us have been very resistant to technology, and I've had to have a crash course on email, Zoom, FaceTime, and even taping a worship service. We've been forced out of our comfort zones. 
that place that we create for ourselves that we think we have control of. This forcing is not easy for human beings. It's not part of our nature. We don't like change and we don't like being told what we can and cannot or have to do. All of this, especially for those of us in the church, renders feelings that somehow we're being robbed of the security of our faith. We're disconnected. The ritual of coming to a particular place, a particular building with familiar songs, familiar people, it just isn't there. It's ironic to me that this situation in the world is happening during Lent. Or maybe it's not so ironic at all. See, Lent is a time when our Lord was taken out of his comfort zone and into the wilderness. And not very long from the time that Jesus was baptized. We're in a wilderness of our own right now. This strange place, this different way of doing things, this anxiety about when, how. Jesus had to feel like that too. He accepted God's mission to go into the wilderness and he met one obstacle after another. I bet if you think about this, you're going to have a greater appreciation of wilderness. I know Bud is just lost without sports on TV. And I can confess, I even miss March Madness. Who, who'd think? Jesus was out of his comfort zone, and the song tells us he walked a lonesome valley. And so are we. Loneliness. Being disconnected without the presence of each other seems in direct conflict to the gospel message of loving one another, of being present and subject to one another. Last week, I officiated at two funerals. We're so used to weeping and laughing and consoling one another, bearing one another's burdens in fellowship, and how we ache from our hearts for the comfort of the touch of others. So just like Jesus, we're in the wilderness, and we too are lonely and challenged. But there's something else we have in common with Jesus. We too have angels guiding and protecting us. When church was advised to not hold services, Roger contacted me immediately and offered to help me with online services. And so overwhelmed was I that I said, no, not yet, not yet. And then here we are. He's our angel. The government and the larger church have given us guidelines and the bishop he is in touch with all of us on Zoom, but he said that we're to take our cues from him and he gets them from the governor. We're called to obedience and out of our comfort zone, just like Jesus. And we're not alone. We have to do a lot of things we might not like, but we're still the church. The church is people, not this building. The church is our fellowship, our community. But more importantly, God is still God. And amazing things he has done. One of the words we throw around a lot is sovereignty. See, our God is sovereign. God has our backs. God is in control and he's providential in nature. 
That means that God is so many steps ahead of us. And like Jesus, walking in that wilderness, we're called to fulfill God's mission of love and care with and for each other in Jesus' name. Remember the greatest commandment? Love one another as I have loved you. We're in a very difficult time, but we'll get through it. Jesus got through the wilderness through the grace of God, and so will we. We're just going to need to learn a lot of new and different things. And we're going to have to be more mindful of things that we have just taken for granted. I refuse to let the coronavirus be in charge of my life. And I also am not going to let it be in control of my faith. In fact, now is an opportunity for all of us to be more faithful, to witness to the gospel, and to use this time we've been given, like we're given every Lent, to draw ourselves closer to God, closer to each other in different loving ways, and even sacrificial. We can participate and be part of the solution. We don't have to be part of the problem. We need to think about wellness as more than physical needs, but wellness as being whole in body and spirit and contribute to the wellness of our planet. I think this is the biggest call to ministry that I've experienced in my lifetime. I've been blessed. And I know it's new and different for many of you as well. But I ask you, no, I beg you. And I pray you join me and others in prayer and obedience to God. I pray you stay well and you rejoice in remembering God's sovereignty and providential nature. Just like Jesus, trust in God our ever-present help in time of trouble. This is our faith. This is our hope. Would you pray with me, please? Oh God, how we need your love and guidance and spirit to be with us in these times of challenge. We can be selfish, Lord. We can take a lot of things for granted. Calm our anxious ways and fill our hearts with your wisdom and your word. Help us to adjust to the safety criteria without resistance and to do our part in caring compassion for others. Quell our moments of fear and restore in us a new boldness and a new awareness of your sovereignty, ways, and promises. Lord, we ask your protection for healthcare workers and all in service to you at this time, for recovery of the ill, whether it be of body, mind, or spirit. Remind us, Lord, that you will see us through and that you promise to never leave us or forsake us. In the name of Jesus, the one who lived, suffered, and came through the wilderness, died for our sins, and rose to new life. Hear the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our concluding hymn is You Are 
Our Hiding Place in the Black Hymnal number 2055. I'm ready. Beloved, God is our hiding place, our ever-present help in time of trouble. Trust in God, believe the gospel, go in peace, and serve the Lord. And may the God of grace, the Lord of love, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you today and always. Amen. Amen.